A warning, what you're about to see are graphic images not suitable for all audiences. Project Truth continues their campaign in the MU Quad for the second day. Student protesters continue to show their contempt for the graphic images and messages. And then we're continuing our segment on OSU's Archaeological Field School at Cooper's Ferry. We'll have all that and more right here on tonight's edition of the Beaver News. Good evening and welcome to your Thursday edition of the Beaver News. I'm Joe Hedberg. And I'm Cody Stover. Thanks for joining us tonight. ASOSU has a new business item that can affect how students will get tickets to football games. JB7202 titled, Built to Support the OSU Athletic Department in Creating and Enforcing a Safe, Fair, and Accessible Ticket Distribution System for OSU Sporting Events, also called in short, The Ticket Bill. Concerns about getting football tickets have come in the form of email, Facebook posts, letters, sticky notes, and etc. According to ASOSU Vice President Dan Cushing, over the issues that were experienced in this week's student ticket line, the ticket bill turns over the distribution of tickets for OSU sporting events as the sole purview of OSU athletics, not ASOSU government officers or employees. Cushing answered questions regarding the bill's vagueness by saying not to micromanage and stating that the bill was vagueness was powerful. powerful. ASOSU will be meeting with the athletic department today to present the bill to them. After attempts to move the bill to special order, the bill did not pass by vote and with suggestions falling flat re regarding a suspension of Robert's rules by a two-thirds majority vote. The momentum was slowed by at least a night. If you would like to participate in the discussion, then you can head over to the MU room 211 tonight at 7.30. If you've watched KBVR News in the last week, this will come as no surprise to you. This is Homecoming Week. The Oregon State Homecoming Parade, put on by the OSU Alumni Association, started at 6 o'clock tonight. The parade loops through campus, features floats from various student organizations and the Greek life community. You may have just missed tonight's parade, but you can still catch the annual Homecoming Bonfire tonight behind Wilson Dorm. The bonfire starts at 7.30 and is open to everyone with Oregon State loyalty. Have you ever been to the bonfire? I didn't go last year. I might stop by tonight. I'm not sure. You? I have actually never been. Not sure if I'm going tonight because i got to eat some dinner. Yeah, sounds like a good time though. Today was the final day to register to vote in this year's upcoming presidential election. For weeks, many volunteers have stood around campus in order for students to sign up to vote for GOP candidate Mitt Romney or current president Barack Obama. For many incoming freshmen, this will be their first time voting in a presidential election. You may not be able to register on paper anymore, but you can go online to OregonVotes.org and fill out the proper information so you can receive a ballot. Make sure you use your current address, whether it's an apartment, dorm room, or a Greek life house, so your ballot will come straight to you. It isn't too late to have your voice heard. If you walked through the quad in the last two days, you probably saw signs warning of graphic images. These images of mutilated fetuses, the products of abortions, were displayed by Project Truth, a pro-life advocate organization that has been in the quad the past few days. The group hopes that by presenting the brutal facts about abortion, they will encourage others to take the pro-life stance on the hot political topic. Oregon State is one of many colleges they will visit, and it has not been a visit without controversy. I spoke with a student employee in the Memorial Union, and she told me that they have received many complaints about the graphic images. Pro-choice protesters gathered today and stood in front of posters, while others created signs of their own. Police officers were on the scene in the quad today in case of an altercation between the two groups. At the end of the day, Project Truth packed up and will continue its college tour. Some of the top experts on religious issues in China will gather at Oregon State University for a two-day conference on topics ranging from Buddhist nuns in Taiwan to the re-emergence of underground churches in Shanghai. The free public conference is scheduled for Friday, October 26th and Saturday, October 27th at OSU's LaSalle Stewart Center. Designed as a series panel of dis discussion panel, the conference will explore the link between religion and politics in modern-day China. Conference organizer Hung Yok Ip 
an associate professor of history who specializes in modern Chinese history, will lead the panel discussion on October 26th on how monk Zayun was influential in securing a space for Buddhism in China in the 1950s. Other speakers will address topics such as experiences of Chinese Christian prisoners in Maoist China, political dissent in contemporary China, and how faith-based charities in China often resist the nation's authoritarian system. This conference is sponsored by Chun Lane Chao Foundation, the Honoring Endowment of Humanities Asian Studies, and the Center for Humanities at Oregon State. For more information, you can log on to the Oregon State website. Focus, precision, and skill. All of these things would be useless to an archaeologist without passion. Just about ready to the Cooper's Ferry site has awakened the passion in student archaeologists as even the most common discoveries help bring together pieces of the puzzle. All these things that we're finding help us to put together a picture of what these people's lives were like. Over the three years that the site has been open, over 200,000 artifacts have been mapped. This is a river mussel shell, and these are important because they can tell us about the environment at this time. Small things like discarded rock flakes, shell, and bone can speak volumes about the way these prehistoric peoples lived. Their trash are our clues. Every inch of the site is carefully excavated as suspense-filled students dig deeper and deeper into history. It's kind of amazing to pull something out of dirt that somebody, I don't know, I guess placed there thousands of years ago. What I really like about it is how you can analyze it, put everything together, be able to basically recreate what it was like uh, back in that time period. And sometimes the stuff they find could be the discovery of a lifetime. Damn, this is sweet, guys. This is Hayden Wilcox for the Beaver News. Thanks, Hayden. If you are a student at Oregon State, you are well aware of this year's new smoke-free campus policy. Along with banning smoking on campus, the smoke-free campaign also focuses on helping Oregon Staters who are addicted to nicotine. And its commitment to helping people quit has helped it gain national support. Stacy Edwards, a health professor at Oregon State, was the main instigator in the smoke-free campaign and has now recently received a $15,000 grant from the American Thoracic Society Foundation and American Lung, Lung Association for her new project geared towards helping non-frequent smokers shed their irregular dependence on cigarettes. The smoke-free campaign, the smoke-free campus policy was a big controversial step, but this award proves that it is being recognized and rewarded. Are you a proud cat owner who looks forward to seeing your pet every night? Oregon State research shows that you might want to be a little bit more hesitant when you see your lovable kitty. As reported by the Daily Barometer, the onset of flu season approaches and most people are worried about catching the flu, but not about giving it to their cats. But the recent research of Christian Laura suggests that it might be a good idea to watch if Snuffles gets the sniffles too. The Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory at Oregon State subsequently diagnosed the first fatal case of H1N1, popularly known as swine flu, in domestic cats. Symptoms of the flu in pets are similar to pe those people get, including le lethargy and respiratory problems like coughing and fever. If these symptoms are observed in pets, the pet owner should take the animal to the vet and point out the possible connection between the pet and the owner's flu. Symptoms of those of the pet. So make sure you not only look out for yourself, but your kitty as well. OSU fans got another injury scare last week against BYU when starting running back Storm Woods had to be helped off the field after a running play. 
The redshirt freshman, who was averaging over 80 yards per game this season, sat out the rest of the game following his injury. I spoke with the Associate Athletic Director Steve Fink this morning, and the news is good for Beaver fans. Fink told me that Wood suffered a minor contusion in the game but has been practicing this week. He will play against Utah as the Beavers look to extend their winning streak. It's good news. we got our running back still in there. I think it's even better news that we have good depth at the running back with Malcolm Agnew and Teron Ward. But even better depth is our quarterback depth. Mm -hmm. Cody Vaz stepping in. KEJO AM and the Joe Beaver Radio Show saw the return of quarterback Sean Mannion under center yesterday. Mannion went down last week with a meniscus injury and had to be, that had to be surgically repaired, and Cody Vaz got the nod to start in the 42-24 win over BYU last week. Mannion spoke to the media on Monday and said he was feeling good and was ahead of where doctors expected him to be. Though he wasn't dropping back very far, he was still making plays to wide receivers and handing the ball off. Yesterday, head football coach Mike Riley said he looked good, but his progress towards recovery will continue to be monitored. Cody Vaz will continue to start until Sean Mannion is fully healthy. I did an interview with Mike Riley today, and he informed the media that Sean Mannion will be the second-string quarterback dressing out in this Saturday's contest against the Utah Utes. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and the Oregon State Memorial Union Program Council was near the quad today raising awareness on campus. The MUPC passed out free pink breast cancer cookies and button pins that read, Beavers Love Boobs. The Awareness Month was started by the National Breast Cancer Foundation, and more campus events are scheduled throughout October to raise awareness and, uh, on campus. Well, before we end our segment tonight, we're going to take a quick look at this week's weather report. Enjoy the weather while it lasts, because after homecoming ends tonight, we're going to welcome the rain for the weekend. Friday, we can expect a high chance of rain with a high of 64 and a low of 46. On Saturday, the rain is going to continue, with the, and with the rain comes the cold. We're going to see a high of 57 and a low of 39. Break out the jackets, because it doesn't look like weather is going to let up. On Sunday, we're going to see a high of 52 and a low of 37. Unfortunately, we're going to see much of the same on Monday. Hopefully, the Beavers will take this rainy weather as an advantage over the Utah Utes and will use the rain in our gain. Well, that's all the news we have for you tonight. I'm Cody Stover. And I'm Joe Hedberg. Thanks for joining us tonight.